Well, hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Q&A. Today, I'm going to be talking about actinic keratoses. I'm gonna be answering your questions about what they are, why they occur, and what treatment options are pursued to get rid of them. Actinic keratoses are very common skin lesions that are rough, scaly, bumpy spots that occur on sun-damaged skin in areas of the skin that are frequently exposed to sunlight. We take them very seriously in dermatology because they are a pre-malignancy, a pre, an early form of a possible skin cancer. They are a precursor to a skin cancer known as squamous cell carcinoma, and therefore we make every effort to detect them and treat them early on in an effort to prevent this risk of skin cancer development. Actinic keratoses are the result of abnormal skin cell development caused by DNA damage to the skin cells. That DNA damage is due to ultraviolet radiation exposure, either from the sun or from a tanning bed. Specifically, ultraviolet radiation in the wavelengths of UVB, the wavelengths that burn our skin, also cause these mutations in our skin cells. And as these mutations accumulate in skin cells, actinic keratoses form or pre-skin cancers that later can turn into a full-blown skin cancer known as squamous cell carcinoma. As I alluded to in the intro of the video, actinic keratoses are very common. People with fair skin are more at risk and tend to develop more of these in their ad later adult life. Also, people with a history of a severe sunburn at any point in their life, most often in early childhood, do have an increased risk for developing these pre-skin cancers later on in adult life. It takes a while for them to appear and usually they don't start appearing until late adulthood. It is the job of our immune system to make every effort to clear out these pre-skin cancer cells, these cells that have damaged DNA. But as we get older, our ability to do that kind of is overwhelmed. And also in individuals who have medical diseases that lower their immune system and or take medications that affect their immune system are at more at risk. Their immune system, either due to medication or disease, is not able to efficiently clear these pre-skin cancers. Not only in people who have a fair skin type, but people who have a history of sunburn and also people who have spent time outdoors either for recreational purposes or as part of their occupation. If you've never seen one before, they kind of, oftentimes they look like a wart. They're scaly, rough, bumpy, little spots. Sometimes they can be quite large and they occur on the backs of the hands as well as the face, the forehead. A very common location for them is on the ears, which is one reason why I really advocate and hope that you all make sure to put sun protection on your ears and protect your ears from those damaging wavelengths of UVB. Uh, they're often red. Sometimes they can have a pigment to them. They can be brown or gray or tannish. And sometimes they are light colored, skin colored. Now the main concern with these skin lesions and why, they, why we take them so seriously is that they can develop into a skin cancer. But we also take them seriously because they, are, they can be very disfiguring. They're unsightly and therefore they can affect your quality of life having multiple actinic keratoses. How risky are they in terms of turning into a skin cancer? To be frank, the risk of any one actinic keratosis turning into a full-blown cancer is actually very rare. But people who form these and form multiple of them, they're kind of a clue to their overall skin cancer risk and people who have more than 10 of them, which is not uncommon at all, it's thought to equate to about a 10%, 10 to 15% risk of developing a malignancy, a squamous cell carcinoma malignancy, which is a full-blown skin cancer that often has to be uh, excised or treated surgically um, and can leave behind very disfiguring scars. So definitely something that you wanna prevent. Rule number one though, never self-diagnose your own skin diseases. This can really set you up for a lot of trouble. So the diagnosis should be made by either your treating healthcare provider, honestly most 
primary care family docs are very, very, very accustomed to seeing these and are very good at diagnosing them. So either you're a treating healthcare provider or, or in the case of a dermatologist, you might be saying, you know, they would be the ones to make the diagnoses, not you. They're pretty easy to diagnose just on looking at them based on their appearance, but occasionally a biopsy is needed, which is just taking a little sample of the skin lesion and sending it to our friends, the pathologists, to tell us exactly what it is. The first approach to treating these skin lesions is to destroy them. And to do this, uh, we use a variety of techniques. Probably the most common, and if you've ever had these, there's a good chance you've had this treatment done, is cryotherapy or liquid freezing spray. This is the same treatment that we also use to treat warts. So if you've ever gone through this, it can be very very uncomfortable and very painful and depending on the size of the of the actinic keratosis and its location whether it be on your face or your body uh, then that dictates how 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 the lesion heals from the cryotherapy and more often than not there's no scar but in cases where the lesion is a little bit thicker and requires a more aggressive freeze cycle. You can be left with a scar and you also can be left with a type of permanent scar that leaves behind a white spot. So it lose the color of the skin in the area treated. So that's, that's an, a risk of the treatment and you know something that is not desirable. The other, other very common way to treat them is something called electrodesiccation and curatage. And what that is, is using a sharp tool to scrape out the pre-skin cancers off of your skin. We put numbing medicine, of course, in first, so you don't feel it. We use a sharp instrument to pick out the skin cell, the, the precancerous skin cells, and then we burn um, behind the base with a little electrocautery device um, that will that will get rid of any remainings. And that often will heal with a little small scar. So not something that you're going to want, but is an effective treatment option in terms of destruction. So just cutting them out or destroying them is one approach, but another approach, particularly in people who make a lot of them, which is not uncommon, is to take a field approach and treat a large area all at once. And the reason for this is a few fold. Uh, to treat the skin, the, the actinic keratosis that we can see with our eyes on your face, but also the fact that people make a lot of these, uh, we know those people continue to make more of them. And they continue to make more of them because they have DNA, uh, damaged DNA in their skin cells elsewhere in their, on their face, for example, that is going to turn into one of these pre-skin cancers. So we try and treat the whole area all at once. It's called a field uh, field treatment uh, to treat what we can see and what is lurking under the skin is going to pop up later on. And a very common way to do this is to use different kinds of medication creams that destroy the abnormal skin cells. A very common medication cream that is used is something called 5-fluorouracil or Effudex. This is a medication in a cream form that is cytotoxic to pre-skin cancer cells. 5-fluorouracil cream is applied to the area for several weeks depending on the area and whatnot. It's very uncomfortable. The area that you're applying the cream to gets incredibly red, irritated, inflamed, and can blister. It's not a comfortable process to go through, but that is a common way they're treated. Another common cream that is helpful for this problem and kind of achieves the field field effect that I'm talking about here is something called Imiquimod or Eldera. This is a medication that can uh, help to guide your immune system to come in and clear out those pre-skin cancer cells off of your face or elsewhere on the body where it's being treated. And this um, is applied a couple of times a week for several weeks and is also uncomfortable. So 5-FU or Effudex and, and um, Aldera, it's several weeks of treatment. Uh, a, a somewhat newer medication that can also be prescribed is something called Inginal Mebutate, or um, it also goes by the name Picado, uh, which is the brand name. This medication uh, also will help to clear these out in a field, field effect, and it is effective actually only in uh, with only two or three applications. So it's a shorter treatment time and therefore is easier for people to tolerate. It's effective 
And then the other type of field treatment that is effective and helpful, although very, it can be very uncomfortable to go through, is something called photodynamic therapy. And what this entails is applying, this is done in, in the clinic, um, a photosensitizing agent is applied to the area, whether it be on your upper arms, for example, chest, um, or even your, your face. A photosensitizing agent is applied and that photosensitizing agent specifically will concentrate in the diseased precancerous skin cells uh, of the area. And then the um, area after, that, after that's applied, then you're exposed to um, a dose of a particular wavelength of visible light that will then kill off those cells that have taken up that photosensitizing agent that was applied. Is there anything that can be done to prevent these from forming? Strict sun protection using a broad spectrum sunscreen, SPF 50 or greater, actually can reduce the number of these that form and will lower your risk of making them. You have to wear a sunscreen on a daily basis all year round in order to have this preventative effect. So it is an important behavior that everyone should put into place. And as a side note, I get questions all the time. Dr. Dre, you're so thorough about putting sunscreen on and protecting your skin from the sun, but aren't you worried about vitamin D deficiency? How do you get vitamin D? The wavelengths of light that activate vitamin D synthesis in our skin are the exact same wavelengths of ultraviolet light that cause these DNA mutations in our skin and set, up, set us up for risk for skin cancer. They also, it's also the same wavelengths of ultraviolet light that burn our skin. There is no dose of ultraviolet light from the sun, UVB, or no amount of sun exposure that you can pursue that will raise your vitamin D without subsequently mutating the skin cells in your, mutating the DNA in your skin cells and putting you at risk for skin cancer as well as a sunburn. And you might, I'm using air quotes here in terms of raise your vitamin D because it isn't even known if sun exposure is effective or efficient at elevating someone's vitamin D. Vitamin D is incredibly important to our overall health, particularly in terms of the function of our immune system and our bone health. Definitely am not underplaying that whatsoever. Vitamin D, low vitamin D and vitamin D deficiency is increasingly common and we're seeing rates of vitamin D deficiency increase. But pay attention, we're also seeing rates of UVB, sun-related sun skin cancers, also increasing quite a bit. So clearly we're being exposed to UVB, the dose that activates vitamin D synthesis in the skin, because we're making the skin cancers that it also causes. If you have low vitamin D levels or you've been told that, discuss with your healthcare provider how to, how to restore that if it's necessary, your supplementation and diet. Uh, but getting vitamin D from the sun is not safe effective or likely efficient. Another preventative measure, however, that's interesting um, is taking a supplement of B3, nicotinamide. Nicotinamide consumed at 500 milligrams twice a day will, has been shown to decrease the number of actinic keratoses that people form, uh, specifically people who already form a lot of them. Uh, taking this uh, supplement has been shown to reduce the number of actinic keratoses that someone forms. So it doesn't keep you from getting them, but it will help to reduce the number of additional lesions that you form. Uh, when this is stopped, however, your baseline risk of forming more goes right back up. So it seems as though it's something that has to be continued. Nicotinamide also can uh, decrease the severity of pre-skin cancers that form. But if you've been given a diagnosis of an actinic keratosis or multiple actinic keratoses, what is the outlook? After they're treated, they can and often do recur later on in life. And once you start making them, you are at increased risk for making more of them, as well as for making all types of skin cancer. Uh, squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, and the deadly melanoma. Uh, so, you know, know that it requires you to then see the dermatologist a lot more frequently. It's a burden on your time and you have to go through these treatments a lot more often, which are not fun. 
So yet another reason to protect your skin from the sun. But I hope this video was helpful in overviewing actinic keratoses, uh, their treatment options, kind of what they are and whatnot. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.